Hello, I am Zarko Draganich, Manager of Communications Engineering at General Magic. Today I'd like to show you a very exciting new development, Magic Cap for cellular phones. This is a special new version of Magic Cap software targeted specifically for cellular phone form factors. It's based on our in-house reference hardware, uh, the MIPS Gen 2 Big Board. Uh, I'd like to show you the hardware now. Uh, the, the center of the whole system is the, the big board uh, based around a MIPS R3000 Dino ASIC and also the Betty Analog ASIC, both developed here at General Magic. Uh, this standard big board that we use for development in-house has been modified for, this, for the cellular phone version of Magic Cap. What we've done is we've added a very special tiny LCD. It's a 1 8 size LCD screen. Uh, and we've crammed it inside of uh, cellular phone form factor plastics. We've also added a touch screen that fits exactly over that and a microphone and speaker so that this prototype can be used exactly like a cellular phone handset with the exception of, of having a cable. But you get a feel for the size and being able to touch the screen exactly as it would be in a real product. Uh, so that's a variation from the, ex from the standard reference hardware. We've also added a, um, an analog uh, U.S. analog uh, cellular phone connected to the big board so that we can actually place live phone calls and receive live phone calls over the U.S. analog cellular network uh, and control it entirely with MagicCap software. So now I'd like to introduce Andy Hertzfeld, our resident software wizard and co-founder, to demonstrate this exciting new platform. The challenge in front of us is to adapt our MagicCap uh, platform for personal intelligent communicators to this new cellular phone form factor where the size uh, is a very crucial factor and uh, where one hand operation is very, very important. So the challenge in front of us was, was to see if we can retain the key strengths of MagicCap in this much smaller form factor. Really the most important aspects of MagicCap are that it's centered around communication and it's extremely easy to use, especially as um, <coughs> the cell cellular phones go digital and the um, intelligence starts creeping into the network. Uh, the carriers in combination with the device makers are able to offer a very rich feature set to users that should improve their lives and, and sell more products. However, uh, really one of the key limiters is the complexity of user interface really for exploiting this new wave of features. And we believe MagicCap is able to make a real contribution uh, to, to making these new advanced features easy to understand and fun and graceful to use. So that's what we'll be trying to, to show you today. As you can see, uh, we have uh, the distinctive personality of MagicCap running in this much smaller 1 8 VGA screen. It has literally one quarter the number of pixels uh, that the mainstream version of MagicCap has. Um, <clears throat> sort of one of the most important factors at making the software easy to use is giving the user a clear understanding of where they are in the software and what functions are available to them at any point in time. We use the physical metaphor of MagicCap to give the users a clear understanding so they can leverage off their real world experience that they've been building up all their lives. The basic navigation of MagicCap, which I'm sure you're familiar with as now, is, is kept in this cellular phone prototype where you touch on an object, either with your finger or the stylus, like I'll touch on this clock here, and it will expand to fill the screen. We step back with one hardwired button on the hardware. You push it and it steps back to get the bigger picture, usually the place you were at last. And so if we tap on the, on the cellular phone here, you'll see it expands to fill the screen. Again, step back, we'll step back. So while we find um, this physical metaphor is, is really great for most users, now, Magic Cap is more than any specific user interface. Magic Cap is really, you know, um, Bill Atkinson and myself have been working on decades now for really trying to create a great user interface. And one of the things we learned is, is the user interface is not just the surface. It's really the sum of a thousand details behind it that make a, tro a product truly fun and easy to use. And the user interface also is never good enough. You always have to experiment uh, to change it, to make it better and better, especially as it moves into, into different product domains. And that's why we designed MagicCap not to be a specific user interface, but actually to be a user interface construction set where it's uh, extraordinarily easy to construct new user interfaces. 
And so one of the first things I want to show to you is how even though this uh, cell phone prototype has the distinctive look of Magic App, in fact, Magic App's user interface is extremely flexible, and we can create all kinds of user interfaces for Magic App. If I uh, tap on the drawer here, we get a set of control panels that aren't quite as important as the main functions on the desk. If I go to the control panel, we'll see one of the main controls here is one that lets us set the style of the, of the, of the main interface presented to the user. And I'll just tap here. We have one that looks like a briefcase. Maybe I'll show you that a little later. But I wanted to show you this one here called menu when I step back. And we'll see that this is a completely different formulation of the, of the Magic App user interface, which is more button oriented, less um, metaphorical, and more straightforward. And um, we have to do lots of user testing at finding out what's the best. My instinct is some users will prefer this style of interface, while other users will prefer uh, the physical metaphor. It's really the choices up to the licensee. But really, the key point with this one, and, and just to show you that it's fully working, I'll, I'll touch on the date book button, and we'll go and we'll go see, go see the dates, or I'll step step back and and go and see my uh, available messages, and we'll see that as well. But the key, the key point behind this interface here is um, that it really took uh, an hour to construct in Magic App, one hour of programming time to make uh, an entire front end like this. And so the key point is that Magic App's user interface machinery will serve us well uh, with the first products and moving on to the future at consistently being able to make the right user interface uh, to allow users to access all of the advanced functionality in the phone system. Okay, now I'd like to show you some of the key functionality uh, of the cell phone product. And of course, as a telephone, uh, the, the key functionality is uh, placing and receiving telephone calls. And we try to use the, the strengths of Magic App and a graphic user interface to make those functions much more easy and, and flexible uh, than ever before. I'm now going to demonstrate using Magic App for cellular phone to place a phone call in, in the easiest way, just using my fingers to tap on the keypad to, to dial a number. And so I'll just um, make, make a phone call to someone else here in the building. I'm going to be calling Zarko, who you saw on the tape earlier. Uh, just press the send button. Notice that even though I only dialed the number, the dialog here on the screen is telling me that I've called Zarko's work phone. This phone is intelligent. Uh, and it looks up and gives you the most information it can at any given time. So we hear the phone ringing. It's giving feedback that it's ringing. Hello. Uh, hey, Zarko. Oh, hi, Andy. Hi. I'm in the middle of giving uh, a demo of Magic App for cell phones. It's really exciting. It, it, it's working great. You wow, guys, you yeah, guys did a great job. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. I hear it. It's almost like you're like in the next room or something. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. And then again, just to hang up, I just press a button on the screen. Uh, the call's done. So that's one way of, um, of initiating a call, but there are many other ways in, 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 in Magic App for cell phones. Usually people don't want to be burdened by, by remembering the numbers. So one of the key ways, uh, things, benefits we can offer is one-touch dialing. For example, if I look here in my Rolodex, it's a way of dialing by name, and I can dial also call Zarka just by tapping on this image of a phone. We also provide uh, a number of speed dial buttons. We're, we're setting up here. As a matter of fact, by tapping here, you can see all of the functionality currently built into the phone. And I'll go to, go to my set of speed dial buttons. Uh, and here we see we have a panel of up to eight buttons at any given time. I'll show you shortly how you can add as many of these panels as you like. So all of your common calls can be r right literally at your fingertips. Let's look at adding in a, a new speed dial button, just to show you how easy it is to create these. Also notice that there's little graphics associated with them, just to put a smile on the user's face and to help them remember the reason that they have this number. If I tap on a blank speed dial button, it com becomes available for editing. I can give the speed dial button any name. And this is the first time we're demonstrating inputting text on, on this product. And there's some interesting issues here. Notice that the, there is a very small projected keyboard that is not usable with the fingers. The really only way to do data entry with that is with a stylus. And um, it's really marginally acceptable at this point. The keyboard is very small, and we, and, 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 and we know that. 
but um, there are many other options. Some licensees, of course, uh, there'll, be, there'll be the ability to plug in larger keyboards when you're at your desk. Many users will prefer to enter their information on a personal computer and just make a quick connection to get it down to their cellular phone. And we're still working on, on, on better ways of using the built-in keyboard, but I'll name one here. And let's, let's call this one, um, I'll, I'll name this one Burritos because it's the place I'm going for lunch. I can give it literally any name that I want. Um, but I'll, I'll just call it burritos here. And notice I can type uh, fairly accurately and quickly on this on this small keyboard. But it, but again, it's not it's not uh, you know ideal. Uh, notice that when it's asking me for a number, it comes up with a much bigger uh, keypad for entering. That's much easier to use with my fingers. It also guesses the area code from the previous one used because most people are using the same uh, area codes over and over again. Again, saving me. Uh, typing time, and then uh, I'll just type in the number of uh, the burrito place around here. Um, just a few, a few strokes, uh, and then after that, it gives me the option of choosing a graphic image associated with it. And here's here's some of the examples here. And because uh, the burritos, I'm kind of hungry. They make me happy. I'll choose this little happy face to be associated with the burrito place. And then if I just tap on this button, it'll instantly make a call. I only have to do that setup once and it's right available to me. Uh, and then finally, just going through the phone here, we have a recent panel where all of the phone numbers I've called recently and even calls that I've received in are listed here to give me quick one button access to those. Uh, Zarco is listed here for work. Notice it, the software was smart enough to automatically abbreviate his last name to Zarco D so I could fit it in one of these small buttons and make eight alternatives immediately available to you. And then finally, uh, at the end here, well, there's the Audix voicemail, which I'll be dem demonstrating soon, and then a uh, control panel for configuring. Uh, I'm having trouble uh, tapping in the, in the corner here, where I can say if I want to, uh, I can make three pages of these speed dial buttons. And so now we'll see I have a whole set of, two, of, of 16 more buttons uh, that I can use to express the most frequent uh, calls. Now I'm going to demonstrate using Ma Magic App for cellular phones to capture a people's phone numbers and addresses and to use the intelligence in, inherent in a product like this uh, to uh, make call, receiving calls more graceful. And so uh, to enter a phone number, I simply tap on, on the Rolodex here. It lists all the people. If I press the new button, we can make a new card. And I'll use the stylus here to enter the name of uh, Timo, my colleague, who's been helping us uh, craft uh, Magic App for cellular phones. So I'll enter uh, his, his first name here, and then his last name. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, it asks me right away, after I enter a new card, it asks me, do I want to add a phone number? Because typically that's the reason you've created the card. And this is Timo at his work address here, so I'll just get my choices and tap on work. And then I'll enter Timo's phone number here using this easy to use big keypad which is 4403. And now I've got his phone number uh, entered. If I just tap on the phone, it'll dial Timo. But we can capture other types of information about him, such as his postal address, any electronic mail addresses he might have, uh, any kind of arbitrary info amount about Timo, just his birthday or, um, you, know, um, you know, just something about him you know, what, what I'm working on with him. Uh, but finally here, some policy for my cellular phone to know about dealing with Timo when he calls. This is telling me uh, the ring sound the phone should make when Timo calls. I'll just tap on that, and instead of a standard ring sound, I'll pick a little chime sound that you just heard uh, that will play alerting me. I'll reserve that sound just for Timo, so I'll know when the phone rings. Uh, that's Timo calling. Now I'm going to demonstrate some of the organizing features of Magic App for cellular phones. If I just tap on the date book here, uh, we'll see it gives me a view of my entire month with little gray bars indicating when I'm busy and when I'm not. So even in this very small screen space, at a glance, I can see exactly uh, the time I'm free, the time I'm busy during the month. Let's go back to the day view here where I could see today uh, the various appointments I have scheduled. I can scroll and, and see them all. Um, he's, oh, ah, I heard that chime. That must be Timo calling. 
So uh, again, uh, the answering dialog comes up. I'll just press answer here. And uh, hello, Timo. Oh, hi, Andy. Yeah, hi. How's it going? Oh, pretty good. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Yeah, I'm in the middle of a demo here, so I'm kind of busy right now, but I'll, I'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks. Good luck. It's, it's working great. great. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.